I recently made this DIY Frame 1 on my livestream with about $25 worth of parts. I wanted to make a comprehensive guide for people who are waiting to get a Frame 1, and for the people who would like to try a digital controller without spending much money. This build in particular can only be used on PC, like in Melee Netplay or other PC games. I'll be making a different build on stream in the future that can also be used on GameCube, Wii, and USB adapters. This build will also get a video guide, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. First, let's take a look at the parts that are needed to complete this project. The main component is an Arduino. If you want to use my existing firmware, you'll need either an Arduino Micro, an Arduino Leonardo, or an Arduino Pro Micro. These different boards have pros and cons, which I'll explain so you can decide which one's best for you. Since the Frame 1 has 20 buttons, the Micro and Leonardo are the best solution, as they have 23 inputs, while the Pro Micro only has 18 inputs. Compared to a Pro Micro though, the Micro and Leonardo are much less common, especially internationally. They're much more likely to come with pre-soldered pin headers, and they usually cost a bit more. In my opinion, it's best if you can find one that doesn't have pre-soldered pin headers or sockets, as directly soldering your button lines to the Arduino provides a much more durable result. While the Pro Micro only has 18 input lines, you can actually daisy chain the X and Y buttons to the same input as they both perform jump commands. This would give you 19 total inputs, allowing you to have one of the two light shield buttons. This is what I'm going to be doing for this build because I have a spare Pro Micro laying around and I wanted to show that it can be used. The next part you need is some sort of buttons. One option is 24mm arcade buttons with pre-made button wires from an arcade part shop like Focus Attack. Unfortunately, there aren't really any good buttons in my opinion. The go-to for the FGC are Sanwas or Saimitsus or other similar buttons, and they all kind of suck. I went into great detail in my box and frame 1 video if you want to hear more about that. They do work though, and they're very easy to use thanks to pre-made quick disconnect wires. They would cost around $60 for the buttons and wires together. Another option, which is what I'm going to be using, is keyboard switches and keycaps. These last way longer and they feel way nicer, and they only cost around $10 to $20 depending on how long you want to wait. These are a bit tricky to solder up, but I do think a novice can do it. There have been a lot of people posting pictures of their keyboard switch DIYs in my Discord server after I made mine on stream, many of which are novices. If you do use keyboard switches, I would recommend 22 gauge wire, either stranded or solid core. I'm going to be using solid core because I like the rigidity of them as it makes cable management more clean. Measuring out each wire and bending them to the right shape though it takes a lot of time. If you use stranded wires they're really flexible and you can use whatever length and they all just kind of spaghetti into place. It's up to you which one you want to use. Next you'll need to pitch some way to connect your Arduino over USB. The two ways I would recommend are just cutting a micro USB sized hole in the case, running a cable through it, and calling it a day. Your cable will be non-detachable without taking the controller apart, but it's super cheap and easy. If you want a detachable USB cable, I would recommend using a Nutrit feed-through like the one that I have here. These cost around $10 and you can connect a micro USB to USB-A cable on the inside, and then use a USB-B to USB-A cable on the outside going to your PC. It's super simple and it works very well as a detachable cable. Finally, you'll need some case to build it in. I just chose a cardboard box for some keycaps that I bought a while ago. It needs to be big enough to fit a layout, and thick enough to house the components. If you're looking for something more durable than cardboard, there's lots of other options out there. I'll be explaining options for all of these different parts on my website soon. I'll post an announcement in my Discord server when that is done, and it'll be linked in this video's description then. As for the tools, I'm going to be using Hacko FX888D soldering station, some cheap quad helping hands from Amazon to better show what I'm doing to the camera, an exacto knife, tweezers, flush cutters, and wire strippers. I'll have links to the tools I use in the description. All of that being said, let's get into the build. The first thing I'm going to do is show how I desolder pen headers in case if your Arduino has them pre-installed. I take my flush cutters and snip the plastic in between each of the pins. After that, I heat each pin from below with my soldering iron and I pull it from above with my tweezers.
So the next thing to do is to make the square cutouts for this cardboard box. An easy way to do that is to print your layout and then tape it onto your case. Next, you can use an X-Acto knife to carve through each of the cutouts, going through the paper guide and the cardboard. Now I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit and use this steel plate to cut this one because I sort of destroyed that piece of paper. It's gone now. Ideally you would be using one of these, which is a Nutrik NAUSB pass-through so that you can have a detachable USB cable, but they cost around $10 so I'll just be using an attached cable for now. To do so, I'm going to need to cut a micro USB sized hole to feed my cable through. Wow, what a gorgeous cut that is. Look at that. The keyboard switches just clip into the 14mm squares. Be sure to push them in gently if you're using a cardboard panel. Yeah, when you do put keycaps on cardboard, I would recommend uh, holding it from below so you don't like break the cardboard. Now I'm going to start wiring this thing. You may want to map out where your wires are going and cut them to the appropriate length as I'm doing here. This is especially important if you're using solid core wire. And then you're going to want to strip the coating off the ends of the wire. I tried to make the solder invisible for the camera, but that made it super hard for me to see what was going on. So if you're looking for a soldering guide, I've linked one that I really liked in the description. Same idea as that ground wire, I'm now going to measure out, cut, and solder the signal wires to the Arduino. Each switch has two pins. One will go to an Arduino input as the signal line, and the other will be connected to ground. It doesn't actually matter which pin is doing what, you can connect the pins either way. Now I'm going to set up a daisy chain ground between all of the switches. This will make it so I can easily connect all of them to the Arduino's ground. Now that we have the wiring done, we can go to program the Arduino. So this is the pinout section here, and I removed the Y and the mid shield button because I don't have those. So L is this one. And I'm going to follow that over to the board, and that's plugged into pin A1. A1, and then left is plugged into pin A0. Down is plugged into pin... is that 15? 15. So in the Arduino IDE, uh, you open it up, 
and the only library you'll need for this is the joystick library and you'll go to sketch include library and add zip you'll just add that zip and then it works next you're going to go to tools and depending on the board you pick if you use a micro or a pro micro you'll pick arduino micro if you use a leonardo you'll pick leonardo before you plug in your arduino you want to see which ports are there on this machine there was port one but on another machine i have there was no ports go ahead and plug it in the board via usb Close and reopen this menu, and you should see another COM port open up. For my computers at least, I usually see Arduino Micro, but it's possible that it won't show that. What should always happen though is that a port should show up when you plug in the board, and it should disappear when you unplug the board, and you reopen that menu. This port will be your Arduino, so you don't want to select it. And upload. Done uploading. So to test and see if it's working, I go to set up USB game controllers in Windows and click on Arduino Micro and click Properties. Let's see if all of the buttons work. Yeah, this is probably not supposed to do that. Uh, okay. Okay, I have this. I have this and this mixed up. So let's swap that. That's X and Light Shield. I must have mistyped. X, yeah, I ha okay, I had those backwards. So this one was zero. Uh, one and zero. Take two. L, left, down, or right. Mod X, mod Y, A, B, X, Z, up, R, Y, light shield. This one doesn't do anything because I forgot to wire. I was gonna connect these two, but I forgot. Okay, and then A, C stick. All right. I'm going to open up Dolphin. So, controllers. To load this thing up, all you have to do is a standard controller and then load the box profile. And then you'll switch this to Arduino Micro if you're using a Micro, or you'll keep it as Leonardo if you're using a Leonardo. So, L, mod X, mod Y, A, B, X, and Y I programmed to be holding the modifiers, and then X, so that works. Z, up, A, C down, C left, C right, C up, R, Y, or also X, and light shield. Cool, it works. That about sums it up. If you want to build one of these and have any questions or want any recommendations for selecting parts, feel free to join my Discord server, linked in the description. There are lots of DIYers in there, and we'd love to help you out with your build.